Good morning, guys. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. I'm Chad Chance. I appreciate you joining us. You've caught me here at a place that I haven't been since I was in junior high school. I am on Adobe Creek Reservoir, Adobe Creek State Wildlife Area, or Blue Lake, depending on what you want to call it and where you're from. Uh, it's a lake that's well known for a boom and bust cycle, and it is on a boom cycle right now. It's a state wildlife area in southern Colorado. We're out here today. We're going to look for crappies and saw guys is kind of our goal and uh, we'll see what happens. But I hadn't been here in so long that I really don't know what to expect. We did uh, make a couple phone calls. I know that the populations of fish are good, so we're gonna go fishing here first week of June and see what we can catch. So stay tuned, guys, it should be fun. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter, Peterson Toyota, Fort Collins, Colorado, St. Croix Rods, best rods on earth, Berkeley, catch more fish, Abu Garcia, for life. And Colorado Parks and Wildlife. And we really don't know anything about the lake, guys. And so all we know is there's fish busting around. I don't want to fish under them. The boat's sitting in about five feet of water, so I can fish the whole water column easily. There's tons of fish bouncing around up here, though. So I might have to keep that thing real tight to the bottom. So I'm doing a typical pattern I'll do when we deal with walleyes or saw guys, either one, uh, in summertime. And that is a lot of jigging, a lot of gulp. Uh, it just seems like this time of year, if you, you can really get a lot of fish to bite the gulp minnow. And so I've got a three inch gulp minnow, I've got it on an eighth ounce jig head, stand, my standard gulp minnow setup. And, uh, and the whole point is to get it on the bottom and make it look more or less alive. So I'm hopping it around to help them locate it. Uh, not necessarily fishing it real fast per se, but I'm not all dead sticking it either. I just want to keep it moving enough to help the fish find it. I've got it real bright. I've got it in chartreuse and white because we've got some stain to the water right here. And uh, we're going to see if that'll pan out for us. I've got it on my standard six foot 10 medium light, extra fast St. Croix spinning rod right here. This one's the Legend Elite. Uh, medium light power, extra fast action, gives you the sensitivity. It's perfect for an eighth ounce jig head and a three inch gulp minnow. Got a six pound trident, 100 percent, oh, six pound trident, 100 percent fluorocarbon. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. There's a pile of them right there. As excitable as that thing was, you know what it'll probably eat, dude? It's a blade bait. Fish, you got him. There we go. All right, well, that didn't take us very long, guys. <laughs> All right, it took me a minute to get tight on that one. And, uh, and that's what we're told there's lots of in here. We're gonna swing him up in the boat. That's what we were told by the hatchery tech out in uh, Eastern Colorado that there was lots of, and he thumped that gold minnow guys right there. And I just did the open about 15 seconds ago. So that's a good start. Uh, we'll take that all day long and uh, they're supposedly these, this year class and one year class bigger. So this isn't necessarily a fishery that we're gonna come looking for big ones. Uh, it's a place where you come catch a whole bunch of fish. The beauty of, of this particular fishery is it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. So it's a destination fishery from that regard. It's a, basically a desert area that we're in in the Arkansas River Valley. Probably as much as anything most known, look at my graph right here, guys. It probably is anything most known for its hunting. So the state wildlife here is about 5,000 acres and uh, it's kind of a mix of, of uh, farm ground and, and river bottom like riparian type stuff and, uh, and it's lots of pheasants, lots of turkeys, lots of quail, um, lots of deer. So you've got that kind of mixing and waterfowling. This whole area of Colorado is very famous for its waterfowl, particularly snow geese. Uh, lots of ducks come through here as well. Um, the, we're, on, we're on the, just a little north of the of the Arkansas River Valley. And so there's the tremendous flyway right here, you know. Uh, white-tailed deer and mule deer both around here as well. So you kind of have that mix going for you. you. Got some antelope around here. So it's just a real kind of a diverse area of the state, even though it feels really desolate. It's kind of a long ways from nowhere uh, to be down here, which is what's cool, you know. All right, there we go. We're just gonna keep working this ridge because we figured out that this ridge will work 
right here pretty good and uh oh, easy there fish what did i catch this time yeah that's what i thought those were guys we marked a bunch of fish on the graph and i was just telling the camera guy that i thought that they were maybe crappies because they were stacked vertically and that's a little tiny crappie for this pond and there's supposedly lots of those in here although i couldn't prove that so we're going to try to find out but there again guys there's another argument as to why we throw the gold minnow so much because if you throw a bait that everybody will bite especially in a lake you don't know anything about you put yourself in the hunt and we've seen as we've banged around here uh we've been working about a hundred yard square we keep seeing these little piles of fish that are stacked vertically little stack of two or three or four or five of them and uh and they're not horizontally if they were stacked more horizontally i'd say they were walleyes or saw guys in this case saw guys uh but because they're stacked vertically that tells me crappie and and i think that some of these light bites i've been getting are those crappies so that's the first one i've hooked and I'd be willing to bet you that if we put a grub down and swim that as opposed to hop in this minnow, we'll catch more of those crappies. Crappies tend to like a more subtle action than does uh, a saw guy or walleye. And so we may end up putting a grub down there and swimming it a little bit less erratic than this minnow right there. But it's okay. We've been fishing just a few minutes and we're getting them figured out pretty quick, guys. There's a ridge right here where the water goes from basically four feet and they're three feet or less and then rolls off into six or eight feet and they're sitting along the top of that ridge. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood. Spend more time on the water. St. Croix Rods, best rods on earth. Fish, got him, I got him right there, bud. <laughs> I think we can work on this ridge for a while. <laughs> Maybe I won't get a blade bait out. I keep threatening to get a blade bait out and every time I go to do it, I catch another saw guy. <laughs> Come on up in here, buddy. <laughs> And we on our show, we're terrible about describing the difference between saw guys and walleyes. And, and I know from, I'm told by the biologists that these are saw guys. And, uh, and so there you go. There's another one looks suspiciously like the others. And now we are racking them up at this point. And our little gold minnow is paying the bill. So far, there's three, four boats right here besides us. And we're the only ones catching anything and they're trolling. Got him. This is apparently a good spot to fish, guys. Yeah, those are crappies. I told you those were crappies. I keep seeing these guys on the graph. That's the second one I just said that, that I thought were crappies, and he swallowed that gold minnow. Look at that, dude. For no bigger than that crappie is, for how big that hook and that minnow is, he got a hold of that thing, guys. But, uh, you know, the thing about the crappies is they're real obvious on the graph from the, the standpoint that they like to stack. They don't like to lay flat. And, uh, and because of that, they usually show up on the graph real distinctly. And this one was no different than that. Beautiful little crappie right there. And I know there's a bunch of those in this lake and they get a lot bigger than that. However, when you can spot them like that and catch them, I'll take it every time. And that's what that deal is right there. You know, you just, you get a bait in front of one of those piles of them. We just marked a pile of them over here. There's another pile of them coming up uh, that, that I had marked on the graph as well. And we'll see if we can pick them off. But the three inch minnow, that's the beauty of it is everybody eats it. Parks and Wildlife did put a low water boat ramp in. So when the lake goes down, I mean, it's very, very high for, by this lake standards. When it goes down, uh, there is a low water boat ramp, so you can still still get your boat in the water here and still fish, which is a, got him, oh, right under the boat. I'm telling you, dude, that's gonna end up being the deal. They're gonna be right under the boat. I bet you, I bet you if I put the power poles down right here and we just sit here, they'll load up right under the boat. Come on. But uh, unlike some of the state wildlife areas, there's a relatively significant, got him, there we go. I told you, right under the boat, guys. <laughs> there you go. Come off of there. Easy, buddy, easy. That's a sharp fish. You don't want to get caught by him. So there's what everybody around us is catching by the jillions of right here. And by the time this show actually airs, these fish will all be this long. <laughs> yeah. What I'm doing is basically with boats not moving, as you can see, it's glass calm. 
And so, and it's hot. I mean, it's already like 85 degrees out and it is 7.40, 7.50 in the morning. But by having my boat sit right here in one spot, I create a big shady spot. And we're only in five feet of water and you think, well, geez, wouldn't that scare the fish? But as long as the boat doesn't move, no, it doesn't scare the fish at all. It's just a big overhead shady spot and you can fish straight under your boat. Got him. There we go. That's why you do that, guys. There's another one right under the boat. Come on in here, buddy. Come on in here. <laughs> That's a mean and dirty trick. That is a mean and dirty trick. And your perfect hook set right in the snoot because he's directly underneath the boat. And there you go. <laughs> The key is don't fish on that side of the boat, fish on this side because that's the shady side. And as the boat drifts along, the fish will just move with you. And uh, I mean, I'm in, I'm in almost six feet of water. So, you know, there's not a tremendous amount of water right here. I've had this work in water as shallow as two and a half or three feet under the boat. The key with it is though, is subtle. You know, less is more. You want to get crazy with them. Got him, there we go. Just like that. And he's gonna look a lot like the last one. Oh, come on up in here, buddy. <laughs> oh, and there you go, guys. There's your perfect fish right there. Big old teeth on these guys, very similar to a walleye. And my three inch gold minnow right there. That's the standard deal, the eight ounce jig head, guys. If I had a nickel for everybody I've caught on that thing, we could retire and go fishing. Be interesting to see when we get down right around my waypoint, basically in the same area they were this morning. Got him. If, uh... now that's a crappie, yep, there you go, guys. Those are real subtle bites on the crappies. <laughs> Total mixed bag and, you know, you can't say enough about a chartreuse and white minnow in muddy water right there, guys. And that ain't a giant crappie, but we haven't really targeted the crappies per se we have been targeting the mixed bag. We've been fishing the high percentage area. We've been trying to catch numbers of fish. And we've always talked about the fact that there's a fundamental difference between fishing for fish and fishing for big fish. And right now we are fishing for fish because that's predominantly what is in this lake. Big fish are not really your option, but by the time this airs on TV, this state weather ferry is gonna be loaded. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Lorenz. Find, navigate, dominate. Peterson Toyota, Fort Collins, Colorado. Colorado Parks and Wildlife. It's cool to watch everybody out here fishing because some of the guys are trolling, some of the guys are dragging jigs with bait because we can hear everybody talk, it's real calm. And, uh, and then, you know, some of the guys, uh, I really can't totally tell what they're doing, but at this point with the wind blowing more like it is now, I'm gonna try some different stuff and see if we can catch them. Uh, so I've got a flicker shad on, I got a number five or number seven flicker shad on, and, uh, and I've got it on the Abbe Garcia Revo winch spinning reel. It's a, as you can see, it's, it's called a winch. The winch line, if you're familiar, is uh, designed for throwing crankbaits. Well, this is a finesse type uh, crankbait that is best thrown on spinning tackle. So I've got it on the winch reel and I've got it on uh, what I got, eight pound nanofill on here and a short fluorocarbon leader. And that way I can throw this real light bait a long ways. And then, a, uh, you know, kill, still keep good feel of it and everything. So it's a really good scenario because it takes all the fatigue out of winding a crankbait. So as far as I'm aware, it's the only specialized crankbait reel, uh, spinning reel that there is, and it's a perfect system. And when the bait gets bit, uh, the rod's real forgiving and that'll make up for the low stretch. I've got a short 10 pound fluorocarbon leader, uh, trailing 100% fluorocarbon leader on there. And, uh, and that's my whole system for throwing the flicker shad. It's a good way to catch them. Oh, oh, I got one on my minnow though, right here instead. See, because I have a second rod stamp and now I caught a one. Oh my gosh, look at the size of that crappie. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Look at the size of that crappie, guys. <laughs> oh my. If that ain't good action, I have told you a million times, I leave a gulp minnow hanging over the side of the boat. I have a second rod stamp. I leave a gulp minnow hanging over the side of the boat all day long, three feet below the boat. And you'd be amazed at how many times that thing will get bit over the course of a day. That's the second time today it's been bit and that is a beautiful, shiny, beautiful Adobe Creek State Wildlife Area crappie. And guys, 
That's good eats right there. And I'm mixing up my angles. We always talk about angles. Sometimes I'm throwing at 45 behind the boat. Sometimes I'm throwing straight ahead of the boat. Sometimes I'm throwing straight behind the boat. And it depends on how much I want to control the jig. If I throw straight ahead of the boat and let the boat drift to the jig, I have the best control over the jig. I can work at the slowest, the most precise, or aggressive, whatever, but it's up to me. If it's behind the boat, the boat tends to move the jig a lot more. And so you're, to some degree, at the mercy of the boat. On the other hand, you can cover a lot of water doing that in a hurry. Uh, if you can keep your, your jig in contact contact with the bottom kind of swimming its way along and then as I'm working the angles I can kind of hybrid myself out as to how precise I am with the jig versus how much the boat's moving it but angles always matter and uh, it typically makes a big difference even on a wide open flat like this. Yeah it's, it's crazy down here how hot it can get that's something you got to keep in mind in the boat uh, it, it's plenty warm down in this neck of the woods water temperature down here 75 76 degrees uh, already here in June and uh, up my home lake up in northern Colorado doesn't even get that warm hardly late in the year. You know, it's a considerably warmer climate down here, so the shoulder seasons can be really good to come to the state wildlife areas in southern Colorado because, you know, March, April, May, when it's still kind of feeling like wintry up north, you can come down here and, and, uh, and feels, you know, feel like you picked up a whole month of, of, uh, of season advancement. Fall trips down here would be great because of all the small game hunting around here. Uh, you come down to a, a straight up cast and blast deal. You know, you can shoot waterfowl and catch these guys or shoot pheasants or, dude, I'm getting bit like mad right there. One thing I can say about <laughs> Adobe Creek State Wildlife Area, they are churning out some fish right here. This fishery is on fire uh, here in June. Gentlemen, looks like you got him a crappie. But uh, everybody we've talked to has been catching fish today, ourselves included. How cool is that? Is that any good? We've caught a bunch. How about y'all? Yeah. We just turned around right there and caught a five-pound channel cat. Oh, nice. Very good. Nice. I slid in a little bit because we got those couple of crappies in a row right there. We always keep track of depth range, you know, more than almost any other variable. And in this case today, we've been bit as shallow as like four feet and as deep as like 12. So it's just been, they've just roamed all over. There's one right there. They've just roamed all over this flat. And, uh, and as if you just cover enough of this flat real gentle, that's a crappie and you have to be, no, it's not a crappie. I don't have to be quite as gentle with that one. There's a saw guy, guys. And yet another saw guy on a little, little flicker shad, bright colored flicker shad, bright colored gulp minnows, adobe. Adobe, ah, Adobe Creek State Wildlife Area. Guys, I've caught so many fish, I'm flustered. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. St. Croix Rods, best rods on earth. Thing with the flicker shad, just like any other crankbait, it might be a finesse crankbait, but I'm never going to wind it 100 yards in one direction. You know, I'm always going to pull on it with the rod a little bit and give it a little bit of a pulse or a stall, or I'll steer it. Uh, commonly, I'll steer the bait a lot, going that route. Uh, just maybe a couple faster turns on the reel handle every so often to speed it up ever, ever so slightly. Uh, but anything other than just wind it in a straight line, most typically I'm going to pull it with the rod to control the action of the bait because that's what gives me the feel. Is it vibrating hard or is it, is it just barely vibrating or whatever the case might be. Throwing it on the Nanofill will for sure give you a chance for that in a combination with the St. Croix you know, Icon Series. It's made for feeling subtle stuff like this and so it works out real good. But again, I just don't want to wind the thing in a straight line. You're going to get most of your bites right when you give it a little pause or a little acceleration or a little turn. So the more of those you put in there, the better off you're going to be. Look at that, guys. How nice is that? When you got the rod hanging off one side of the boat and it gets bit, and then you set the rod down on the other side of the boat and it's trolling along 10 feet behind the boat, and you catch a beautiful baby little crappie. Isn't that the cutest little crappie you've ever seen? I love crappie. All right, guys, it's getting hot out at this point. It's, uh, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning, and uh, it's getting hot out. One of the things we talk about a lot on summertime fishing is make sure that you get an early start if you can in a lot of cases because you're typically going to get a good bite by midday. You might, in some cases, just pound them right through the middle of the day, no problem. And in other days, that morning time is going to be really good for you. And it's interesting because today, 
did the morning, we were out fishing the trollers. And now in the afternoon, the trollers are soundly out fishing us, the guys that are pulling crankbaits. We talked to one guy who's got three flicker shads on and he's caught a lot of fish in the last couple of hours, whereas our bite slowed down. So I think it has to do a little bit with the different level of feeding activity. When they're not feeding, you need to cover more of the flat. When they are feeding, you can settle in and jig them better as we showed you. So that may have a lot to do with that. Of course, a, a very diverse angler would be adept at both. The guy, Dan Swanson, that works with me, his boat set up accordingly. He'd come out here and jig all day uh, or all morning, you know, and then put the boards out and get after him trolling in the afternoon. We won't be here in the afternoon, too hot for that. But I do have a gold minnow down hanging over the side that's just drifting its way along and, uh, and it will get bit, I'm quite certain. I do have a second rod stamp here in Colorado is uh, required to have that. And then I'm throwing this flicker shot around, see if we can pick up one more bite and then we're going to get us a cheeseburger. Got, there's my bite right there. Let's see, it's like, oh, he came off. Oh. That was a crappie, I'm quite certain of it. It was a very subtle, soft bite. Oh. That's a bummer. <laughs> That's okay. We've caught a lot of fish today. It's hard to argue with a few of them that you, get, that you lose. And this, I've got a real bright color on. Uh, there's one right there. It's like lime green. Be real gentle with him, real gentle, because he's just wee little crappy and he's on there. Come on up here, buddy. <laughs> so that's two and two bites, and that's why they come off. We've caught big crappies and little crappies today. I think uh, there's definitely more to the crappie fishery than, than, uh, than we've shown you here today, but we really came to, to show the diversity of it. We've caught some big ones, and it was really fun. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. Come check out Adobe Creek State Wildlife Area, otherwise known as Blue Lake. Get information on Colorado Parks and Wildlife's website. We'd love it if you join the conversation on social media at Fishful Thinker. Otherwise, tune in and we'll see you next week. Now for Berkeley's best catch. Got him. There we go. That's why you do that, guys. There's another one right under the boat. Can you perfect hook set right in the snoot because he's directly underneath the boat? And there you go. Berkeley, catch more fish. What was that? What was that? <laughs> oh, come on now. They are messing with me. Got him. Oh, I hung that one, bud. Be walleye. Got him. Oh. This way. There, I got him. Oh, they want that thing to go fast, dude. Did you see that? Got him. Oh, God. Now you can cut for a sec. I am going to get a blade out.